Hello and welcome back to All About Community. Again, my name is Robert L. Harris and I am your host. When we went to break, uh, you may have noticed that George indicated, George uh, is the president of the NAACP Oakland branch, indicated that uh, there's a case called Dred Scott. You need to know that uh, Dred Scott, that decision essentially said that a black man has no rights that a white man is bound to respect. And you cannot, uh, you, you cannot uh, uh, think about that just as a, uh, as a theory, but you have to think about that in the context of what's happening today. Just think about some of the police uh, actions they demonstrate clearly and often that a black man has no rights that are bound to be respected. So George, uh, let's talk a little bit about uh, the old uh, separate but equal doctrine uh, of the United States Supreme Court, uh, Plessy versus uh, Ferguson. Where are we with that? Well, separate but equal. And I have never been able to picture a separate but equal situation. <laughs> uh, because my first observation of uh, discrimination, overt discrimination, after moving to California, I, we had my mom and I and brother took a trip down to uh, Louisiana. And I remember being in the, uh, on the train and we were had we had opportunities to go to the dining car, mm -hmm. and we got to Texas. We could no longer go to the dining car. And then not only that, when we got off the train and and one city in Texas, whichever the first one we stopped, then the bathrooms were separate, and the water faucets were separate. So when you say separate but equal, that has no meaning to me, because it's never been equal. It's always been separate but not equal. Well, that's true. I grew up in the South. I was born and raised in Arkansas, Arkansas. I had to use a, 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 a separate segregated bathroom. I had to go to a separate water fountain. And none of that was equal. Matter of fact, you could go to the colored, uh, they call it the colored water fountain. You go there, man, it was corroded, everything right over there to your left. You would see the white folks, just beautiful, purified water. I mean, it's but, a joke. But I had I had my first experience with discrimination here in California. Is that right? <laughs> I lived in a segregated housing project in South San Francisco. South San Francisco is a separate city out by the airport. And we lived in the color section of a project called Lindenville. And in South San Francisco at that time, you couldn't check books out of the library unless you own property. So no black person owned own property. property? No person at whole town, no black person at whole town back in and during that time owned property. And there was and the and the housing project was adjacent, very close to it on the other side of the railroad tracks from Tamperan Racetrack. And during the Second World War, they would intern the Japanese in Tam, at in Tamperan Racetrack for the sent those camps uh, in the east or in the west, wherever in the west they sent them. Mm -hmm. And so you saw these kind of things. And very visible, you know, and, and so we knew in South San Francisco what our place was. A little mystery. It, well, you know, you knew who you were and what your position was. You were, you were, you were a secondary, you were, you, were, you were secondary to everything else. You were, you were not an equal citizen. Well, you, you had know, no rights. Well, George, uh, things have now changed. Uh, just recently we had a verdict uh, in the George Floyd case where the jury found... Uh, uh, the white police officer uh, guilty on all three counts. So that means that everything is fine, right? You know, <laughs> it's a, it, it may be worse for some people right now because the killings have seemed like they increased. You know, you'd think that after being a witness to a murder, the whole world had an opportunity to see a murder uh, on television or, or, or whatever music communication they, they were, had access to. Mm -hmm. You would think, you would think that they, the lesson was learned. I said to you before that I saw the t videotape 
of Mario Gonzalez and Alameda getting killed. And that was recently. Yeah, and, I, and it's, the knee was on the, the knee was on the neck. So you would think that this man in this park doing nothing, he had not committed any crime that anybody's aware of. But what happens is this is a sad part about our, our system of justice. When you get arrested or, or you get killed, the first thing they do is go find your record and say, yeah, you know, 10 years ago he did X, Y, Z. Well, no, you didn't kill me because of something I did 10 years ago. You, did, you killed me because something I allegedly did right now. So don't use my history and my past against me. So the record is being used to show that he's a bad person. And since he's a bad person, he got what he deserved. Uh, unfortunately, we're going to have to uh, go to break again, but uh, we will be right back. So put that remote down. Matter of fact, just put it down. Don't even think about changing channels. We will be right back with All About Community. Again, my name is Robert L. Harris, and my guest is George Holland.